Welcome to this week in Lyrica. Bing bong bong bong. Welcome to episode 480 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. And I am Glenn, not Russ. Russ Glenn. I am Russ, Russ Trent, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> no, you're not. we're not saying you're Russ Trent. Oh, you're his, be, you're yeah. his roommate. Yeah. <laughs> you're his roommate, Nick. <laughs> if you turned your volume on, you would know You would know the, the, the plot. Oh, plot. Fucking, <laughs> fucking ignorant bald head. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes. Have you have you ever noticed <laughs> the bald head suck? Oh, oh fucking butted a ding 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 dong ding dong duck. <laughs> Welcome, new listeners. Um, <laughs> this is this is the show. This is what it is. <laughs> now, um, how you going, fellas? I mean, obviously, yeah, Glenn's not so great. I mean, he's looking he's looking quizzically at these. Computer at the moment, but perhaps we're going to get one of those episodes. Yeah, um, fucking well, I members, hope not. members, members would know all about it. Um, so you can't, you can't actually hear hear us at all, Glenny. I can hear you just fine. Okay, well then, why are you looking all? I don't know. Bomber clap for. <laughs> <laughs> you good, mate? Mm. You right, Glenny? Yeah, I think so. It seems to be working now. Okay. Was it working when I when I asked you how you were two minutes ago? I don't know. Oh my god! All right. This is Glenny tonight. <laughs> how you going, stepdad? Ah, <laughs> uh, look, it's a run home to the finals, and oh, I'm excited for the finals. I think it's going to be great. I think this is the biggest news week of the year. Um, Numerically, well, I just, well, just in terms of the, um, the the weight around some of the stories, but, but I don't know. Could could I could I start off quickly with I think the most relevant news story? It's that uh, that article I sent to you guys today. Oh, I love that article. Out of, I mean, like all articles, probably a stretch for it, but like a yeah, a, a, well, tell you a what, well a, a it, well it, researched. It has just as much right to call itself an article probably more of a right than a fucking Fox News you know um, website posting an opinion piece from a fucking Fox run TV show hosted by Fox journalists so um, on NRL Twitter there was a a user he's he's not associated with the show he didn't send this to us it was just a public post Um, his name is Excellent Dad Yokes uh, he's apparently a Titans fan. He has said, and I haven't fact checked this, but it sounds true to me. You can actually play along with this as you're saying, like on the um, on the predictor on That's the NRL it. website. So, uh, a loss for the Tigers or the Titans this week means they can't make the eight. He goes on to explain it. He says, uh, "I've been playing around with the ladder predictor. Yada yada. There are seven rounds left." So the max that the Titans and the Tigers can get is 10 wins, right? However, if they lose, they can only get nine. Currently, the Sea Eagles are on nine, and the Roosters, Raiders, and Dragons are on eight. The Dragons play the Sea Eagles, so either Manly get to 10 wins and fade the two teams, or Dragons get to nine. Roosters and Sea Eagles play the following week. So same as above, either the Sea Eagles fade the Tigers or the Titans, or Roosters hit nine to make the eight. Raiders play Dragons round 22. So if Dragons win, they will be at 10, assuming they beat Sea Eagles, because if Sea Eagles won, Tigers, Titans would already be faded. Yeah? You following along? Yeah. Otherwise, Raiders... Oh, yeah, I'm reading it as... Raiders, oh, okay. Raiders will be at nine. That now leaves Sea Eagles, Dragons, Roosters, and Raiders at nine wins. Round 24 sees the Raiders play the Sea Eagles, which means either of the two teams must be on 10 wins following. That's the crux of it. Therefore, after this weekend, if either the Titans or the Tigers lose, they are officially faded, i.e. cannot make the finals. And if Manly win, they're faded. 
And yeah, if Man- if Manly win this weekend, they're fucked. Doesn't matter gone. what they do. Yeah. But if either of them lose, they're fucked. What say you, Glenn? Does anyone really think Tiger's going to make the finals? <laughs> really? Well, no, but is, is this the earliest in a season that you remember being mathematically excluded? Does this include Western Suburbs? No. No. Ah. Uh, Usually you're mathematical until the yeah. Raiders or South put 60 on you. Yeah, typically. Um, so, yeah, I think this would be the earliest. Yeah. Uh, but like right after it's not the <laughs> earliest. It it is by far the earliest that I have become dead inside and given up hope that they may actually. How fucking good? Achieve how good something. is it? How good is it that you always beat the Cowboys? It's it's my favourite thing about the Tigers <laughs> because no matter how you know, and I was dead inside two months ago uh, when it comes to the Tigers. But um, the the thing that helps me sleep at night is that we always, without fail. Beat the Cowboys. Yep. Except for that time earlier this season, and possibly again on Sunday. <laughs> Keep hope alive. Now, there's a couple of real stories as well uh, with the doggies. They say it is said that the now it is now a dollar ten that Seraldo will sign on with uh, the doggies. And uh, he go next season. Uh, so so Mick, Mick Potter, despite you know what has been, you would have to say stellar caretaker work. You know, repairing, certainly better than re- someone re- else. Repairing the absolute, you know, like getting the fire extinguisher out and you know trying to take care of some of the dumps, the fire that Trent left behind. And um, but yeah, the big the, the big thing is he's uh, Serraldo signed a one year extension for the Panthers for next year yep. as an assistant. Yep, but. He did. Uh, he did ensure there was a get-out clause that provided he informs the Panthers before November first uh, he can take up another role. And I did also uh, see that the West Tigers quietly, before announcing the Benji and Sheenius uh, five-year uh, assist apprentice deal, they actually made a quiet inquiry to Seraldo again to say, are you, sure? <laughs> are, you, are, you, "Are you sure?" And apparently the. It was a polite. Are you sure uh, you don't want to c- contract <laughs> rugby league syphilis? It was a, a polite, a polite yet firm no <laughs> on, on that one. <laughs> um, and speaking of the, co- the coaching situation, uh, it, it said that the Dolphins. I mean, not even in a competition yet, but um, apparently they are going to offer the uh, Saint Helens coach Christian Wolf a multi-year deal job to join the club as an assistant next season serve as an assistant for two seasons and then take over Wayne Bennett as head coach from 2025 which will be um, when at the point when Wayne Bennett then retires yeah okay at the age of about 75 74 75 or something like that mm. so he, he's you know he's won the Super League with St. Helens uh, he was said to be uh, offered the job for the Warriors uh, but he knocked them back, and uh, yeah, and the Warriors. Unfortunately for them, they they, they identified Christian Wolf and Cameron Seraldo, and both of those <laughs> both those <laughs> guys knocked knocked them back. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, would you prefer uh, the coach the Warriors than the Tigers? Yes, I would move to New Zealand before I coach the West Tigers. Wow, and the Bulldogs? Oh, look, would you take the Bulldogs up. over the Warriors? Yes. Bulldogs job, yep, and and clearly take the Bulldogs over the Tigers. So. Bulldogs have displayed a willingness to spend money and try and fill gaps. My yeah, only... So have the Tigers. They what? spend money who, on where, who? by paying overs to players that aren't worth it and filled gaps with fucking players that have no business, like round pegs in square holes, still filling a gap. What are you talking about? No, it's, it's not. The, it's the same thing. They're the same picture, Nathan. <laughs> No, no, it's not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look, uh, look, I'd coach, I'd coach the West Tigers if I got an ironclad agreement that, like, that Robert Farah <laughs> had like that life ban shit where he couldn't even step across the threshold yeah, to ten games, and yeah, at he, any at any any game, no matter what the venue. What, so, what what clauses would you want in your Tigers contract? You you'd want you'd want a a Pasco massive. Free zone. Yeah, you'd want a massive termination payment. Yeah, massive. If, if you were terminated beforehand. 
So like a, a termination penalty to the club that wouldn't be so bad that it was preventative, but enough that they'd have to like really look at the players. Enough that you'd probably get the time that you wanted to work. Well, en- enough. So when they're looking at it, they go, oh, not, oh, it's fucking easier to sack Madge. They go, oh, yeah, Luke Brooks really isn't that good, is he? Let's yeah. fuck him off. Um, yeah, I'd want um, conditions around uh, Pasco having no say on players. Uh, I'd want five years of Tiger Town. <laughs> yep. Honestly. Um, I'd want a final cut on it as well. Yeah, fuck yeah. And, and depending on, here's the other thing, depending on the length of some of your contracts... You know, um, fuck, is, is five years enough? Yep. Like, if you look at your manly side now, who was there five years ago? Jeez. <clears throat> okay, so the first the first grade side is running out. Turbo, the, the Turbos. I'm sure I'm sure Brad Parker was probably around, but uh, it's five years ago. Daly was so there. So, so, so Daly's there for sure. Um, um, obviously, Foz wasn't. Um, uh, fucking Kapow? I th- look, I think so. He was definitely around that sort of 17, so, 18 so they, sort of... Kapow? Yeah. Mm. Fuck, has he been there that long? He's playing his 100... He either just did or this weekend's playing his 150th game. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was either last week or this week, I think, yeah. Um, for, for Manly. For Manly, yeah. yeah right. But no one cares because he's not James Fisher-Harris. Well, no one cares because like the only reason he's played first grade is because we're trying to showcase him to the dragon, so they'll buy him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but that's the thing. How, like, how do you take on a coaching job now, knowing, well, I've got people sticking their their hands in recruitment everywhere. You know? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'd want some assurances around Sheens. The problem with these, you'd you'd want to, you'd, the thing is, you'd, you'd want these clauses in place, but they're the type of clauses that you couldn't actually get in place unless your name was like, you know, Bellamy, Hasler, Wayne Bennett, yeah, you know, coaches, coaches that with like like long term coaches, oh, yeah. who've who've illustrated that they've had success and stuff. They're the ones who can dictate. Look, I, the football department is my department, and there'll be there will be no meddling from whatever. Uh, yeah, they're, they're the sort of guys that can demand that shit. I mean, if we were. Walking in there, they'd just be like, "Well, look, what are you going to do for us? We're going to give you all these clauses." Yeah, so um, tell yeah, you what, win, motherfucker. Listen, do you want to win? Have listened to the uh, longest-running rugby league podcast on the fucking planet. Tell us we don't know what we're fucking talking about. Yeah, I mean, and we, here. and we, if nothing else, have proven to be expert at at exploring the deficiencies of the West Tigers as an organisation, football team. <laughs> And and just general cultural icon. <laughs> We're like the friend, um, the friendly Geordies of the West Tigers. <laughs> uh, uh, right. So, um, but it, if if nothing else, like how the Tigers are still making the news, they are a fucking rubbish side on the paddock. Luke Brooks is still in the fucking paper every week. It's it's actually quite. It really highlights that, like we've said before, that the Tigers generate clicks, even if it's just yeah, the, that's it. the meme meme value or or whatever. But like, why? Why? Like, I barely care. Why does fucking anyone else click on it? Well, that's the thing. Like the West Tigers. I mean, they're certainly they're never like the the club that you see at the top of the like number of memberships paid for and all that sort of thing. So it's not it's not West Tigers fans that are predominantly clicking on that shit. Mm, it's mm. people it's people it's people clicking on the West Tigers articles to have a laugh. Yeah. Can- Look, I'm I'm dead inside and barely can fucking look at like the stories or the headlines. Like why people Can I throw that have out an there, interest? Though? It do you think number of memberships directly translates to number of fans? Like is it just an extrapolation? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, there, there is also that thing of, you know, people love a fucking, people love a train wreck. You know, mm. they love, they they love horror porn or, or <laughs> gore porn, I guess. Um, you know, every, every, everybody sat down and watched fucking Struggle Street for 
however many episodes it ran for. And I'm not not saying that those the the people in that didn't deserve to have their story told, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like they were having their story told. They were being portrayed in mm. a way that people could sit down and go, "Oh, fucking glad that's not me." Oh, look at look at those people, mm. yeah. and, and that's about what the West Tigers are now. I think in the media, as in Strong. fans of other clubs go, "Think fuck, yeah. that's not my club." Yeah. Look, well, what a fucking joke this is. Blah, 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 blah. Even the fans of the teams that are winning the spoon are looking at the tyres going, thank yeah. fuck, that's not my club. Yeah. That says something. <laughs> and this year, the Tigers are going to be the team that wins the spoon. Full exactly. Circle. Well, let's not get Destiny. too carried away, Nathan. Fucking, there's, it's, it's, we're still a mathematical chance of making the finals. Apparently, according to some cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you're so hearing this, it more and more, Nathan. <laughs> so after this weekend, you're going to be then it's going to be the battle for the spoon, avoiding the spoon. Oh, that's going to take so, your focus. Why are you going to be such a negative? That's not a negative. I mean, avoiding the spoon is the goal, right? Well, making the eight is the goal. There's still a chance. Ten wins yeah. apparently gets us there. Fucking what? <laughs> um, yeah. Now, uh, what other stories did I see that I want to uh, to look at? There was something else I wanted to see. Did you hear this story through the week that Brad Arthur had been shopped around to another club? How does that work? Yeah, yeah that's exactly my question. I saw the headline. I was like, how is that even possible? So his management approached a uh, rival Sydney club, which has since been revealed as the Bulldogs, uh, offering offering him services. Hang on, so is that so, him being shopped around? Or him his, shopping himself around? By his management. Oh, However, okay. his management aren't necessarily going to shop him around without his... Because just the action of that happening is can be quite damaging to his existing situation. Yeah. And like morale, a team is contending for the finals and so on. But he would have to be on board with it. Yeah, that's what I mean. You would think he would have to be on, but they wouldn't do it like behind his back or anything, right? No. Um, oh. Again, like we, we don't have a high opinion of fucking player managers. Yeah, um, you know, they're all cunts to a stri- man. Strive company excluded, but um, shit included at the top of the tree. Look, you know, <laughs> it, is is this one of those things where where such and such is talking, and they're like, oh, you know, look. Uh, if if things don't work out, we'll give you a call. Would that be okay at the end of a lunch and someone overhears it? Who fucking knows? Yeah, you know, this yeah. is that sort of shit. That's like, well, okay, you know, it's it just shows how like how how cutthroat it is these days. When when there there are a number of clubs out there and a number of first grade coaches who would probably be be quite happy with the the results and the record generated by Brad Arthur in his time at Parramatta over the last, what, like yeah. eight, nine years. That's it. Um, you know, pretty much finals the whole time. Yeah. Pretty much. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, I just find it, I find it interesting and like, I just find it interesting the discourse about when coaches are in danger of being fired. Yeah. His name is up there no matter where they are on the table, which is really Around the top four or just outside of. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the top four is only win a, a couple, re- recent win, thing. win a couple of spoons under him? Yeah, but they, 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 were, they were in the top four for the entire last entire last season until the very death. Yeah, but I'm when saying they when, jumped them in when, the, the when they were making, two, fi- making finals every year, it, it was as, you know, between sixth to eighth, wasn't it? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you know, there, there would be some among us who would love to make finals every year, Glennie. Once, yeah. Uh, asterisk any year. Made yeah, the ever. finals. Made the finals three times. Don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. <sighs> How'd that work out for you? Won premiership. A couple of heart heartbreaking fucking losses. That funny in that heartbreaking loss, one of those heartbreaking loss years. I had a Facebook memory come up uh, a couple of days ago. I think it would have been what's the date today? Twentieth. So it would have been yesterday on the nineteenth. And I, I posted on Facebook in twenty eleven. Just bought tickets for the grand final. It would be nice to know who Manly's opponent's going to be. I posted that on the nineteenth of July. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, so, so I've often spoken about how calm I was about that that grand final, and how it was, always felt like a foregone conclusion. Apparently, I was feeling that way months before the finals. <laughs> yeah, if I remember correctly, and I do, you're an insufferable cunt that whole year. Oh, 
it's because you make predictions about a season and what you do, you're not making predictions. What you're doing is just like bigging up your own side and like so literally everything I said came true. <laughs> like rookies of the year, like it, it, fucking Clive Churchill, like everything. I well, not relate. Clive Churchill. I can yeah. relate to that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course you can. I know you can. Um, fuck, what, other, what other stories? Oh, I saw it late, late before we started recording that uh, Dean Ritchie had a, an exclusive where he was saying that uh, there was an interview with Tommy Turbo and he was saying that he... Um, outlining his uh yeah his rehab schedule and everything with an aim to get back like around week two of the finals so wow i'm and i'm of two minds i'm like well other four i mean there's the there's the one hand where you're like you know look you know best player in the game you want to get him into the side anywhere but there's also you know on the other hand is like combinations and things like that and it, and if you've been out of the side for a good like four months or something like that and the teams had to rebuild the way that they play and it's really just coming to fruition like the last couple of weeks you've seen the way the attacks gone and average over the last like sort of three or four weeks they've averaged about thirty six points a game and you can see it's it's all starting to click. Um, it's like, do you just slot? Do you slide him back in in a fucking week two of the finals, which is a sudden death situation? Look, or yes. do you slot him in? Do you, do you slot him in at fullback, or do you slot him in like in the oh. centres, maybe with a roving commission, so Man, where he doesn't me- have where where the structures aren't too tampered with, but he can still inje- in, uh, inject his brilliance. I, I don't think this know, is specifically rugby league related, um, but there was a an old, old, old. Um, Greek philosopher saying, and I hope it doesn't lose anything in the translation, but it comes roughly as, did you even fucking watch Luttrell's first game back, you blind cunt? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's fucking, it's that situation with that guy. He is yeah. that good yeah. that you go, okay, well, the biggest fucking thing here is match fitness because he has no match fitness. Yeah. And so, admittedly, his injury is not one that's going to, certainly towards the tail end of the rehab, he's going to be able to run exactly. his way back to, to you know, you know, fitness somewhat, but because um, it's so not a leg injury. The, but, the yeah. other plus is, you say to Ruben Garrick, um, yeah, sorry, Big Dick Barry's back, but when he needs some time, you need to go back and, mm. and, and deputize for a while. So fucking yeah, I didn't even, I'd, I'd, you bring him back I'd, in the second I'd, round of the finals. Yeah, it's it's more like about it's more like about you know how do you bring him back? Do you slot him straight back into no, fullback? I'd, straight I'd, back into fullback. I'd, I'd almost I'd almost chuck him in at left center and then push someone out to the wing and then leave and then that way, if at a well, game time the, decision he can play fullback if he likes. There's a fucking reason but, Des Hasler doesn't blow you weekly. He fucking should though. I mean, so, I do make a lot of calls well before he fucking makes them. Yeah, just, bit, just quietly, just quietly. Um, I mean, no. that's another. A lot of man, a lot of manly fans do. That's the thing. Desi, if nothing else, he's a loyal guy and he moves slowly for the ultimately for the right result. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer than people than the fans would like to see it, see it take. Man, he, he is one hundred percent one of those guys. Not not at all to the the extent of Latrell. Um, he is one of those guys who just by his presence on the field. He will have defenses in two minds. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. E- easy choice. Yes, in at fullback. Yeah. You've got Garrick for cover. Kind of like a yeah, like a, like a young Ruben Garrick. Imagine having two of them on the field at the same. Oh my gosh! Fuck. <laughs> I can only get so wrecked. Uh, <laughs> um, I will say I um I saw a reel uh, come up the other day uh, with the uh, Justin Horro and. Um, the guy, you know the rules guy, Isaac. John. Yes. Yep. Right. Now talking about Latrell Mitchell. The fucking, the way that they spoke about that guy and the way they revered him, like these guys aren't even in the NRL anymore, but just the way that the regard in which he's held by his peers, it's exactly like Jay says and, 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 Tom is is no different, but just the the way that they speak about him and, and you can that's these guys aren't in the NRL anymore and they still feel that way about him. Can you only imagine mm. the guys that play against him week in week out? Yeah, um, yeah. how they feel. So yeah, and the, and the and the, the 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 second part of that whole thing about you know coming back in the finals is that then it's said that if he comes back, then he'll just be named direct straight up right center for Australia for the World Cup. And rightly so. Yeah, yeah. Rightly so. Like, yeah. 
it, he hasn't he hasn't been out of form. He's been injured. Yeah. And in you know, honestly, this this isn't like the soccer World Cup where there's a bunch of teams that could fucking win it, and just by nature of the whole fucking uselessness of that sport, somebody turning their head on the wrong angle and giving an own goal can rub the favourites out of it by luck or chance. You know, yeah, that's this, right. This is actually a fucking skill based game. <clears throat> yeah, not, not and a not only that, it's a, it's a and it's a skill it's a skill based game where where it's very very top heavy stacked in terms of talent. Exactly. Like, so, exactly. I mean, like in the hobby that we call soccer, I mean. <laughs> there, are, there, there's, there, are, there are tons of places that that, that are, you know partake in this particular hobby. Yeah, and so, so the skill level, I mean, it it can shift and and and, and yeah, any number of like what probably what six teams, eight teams, and don't have get got me, a reasonable shot. Don't get me wrong, an impressive visual spectacle, you know. But then again, so is that fucking wrestling thing. Which is entertainment. So is, so is another. Not, so not is a the quilting World but, Cup, which is also a hobby. <laughs> no, he's saying he's he's he's, he's, he's saying that he's saying that the, the soccer is 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 uh, the the By no WWE, WWE of ball sports. Yeah, so, you know, skillful and um, takes years of dedication and practice and uh, poverty apparently to be good at it. But yeah, no, it's, um, Tommy goes straight into Australia. But oh, yeah, then you look at yeah, and you look, but you look at look at the, the rugby league World Cup. I mean, there are probably going to be. You could probably pick about four teams, and they're going to fill at least three of the final four spots in the finals. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, so it's really it's really Australia, Australia, England, New Zealand, and that's not in any particular order because New Zealand are probably you know, in form, you know, on form at the moment. But um, the, the probably the top side. But um, then after that. You know, you're probably, you know, what, probably Tonga, but then you never know. It's, you know, I guess teams could, you know, flash in on their day in a, in yeah. a, in a final situation and, and, and get into that final four. But I think the other the other three, are, you know, you'd have to say they'd be pretty much locks, right? That's it, yeah, for sure. Exactly. And it'll be seeded seated accordingly as well, you know, to ensure that's, you know, that's what we get. Um, any other news stories that came out through the week that you fellas want to talk about? Yeah. Um, or shall we move on to round? What are we up to? Round twenty? Is it nineteen? What yes. say you, Lenny? What uh, else? What else happened? I felt like there was more news stories. Yeah, that's why. That's why I put it out there because I'm just. Uh, I what feel happened? like I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. See, I've, I rely on you too much. You're my you're my arpy. <clears throat> the, the, ser- <laughs> the service you give is just too fantastic. <sighs> Unfortunately, this time you you, know, you 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 needed me, and I and I was stepping out in my misses at the time. So Jesus, oh, fuck. Well, bad happy. Look, I'll tell you what. Let's 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 just go through some fucking headlines here. Right. He's already gone after Mitch Moses. Benji wasting no time recruiting for the Tigers. Are you fucking serious? Mm. Why would you do that? What's the next headline? <laughs> um. Oh, I don't know something about Wayne Bennett, <clears throat> uh, Gustalandi's man with Seraldo. We've already spoken of that. Um, oh, the Reese Walsh uh, saga, where it looks like he might be going to the Storm immediately. What? what? I haven't seen that. Yeah. Where are you reading that? Yeah, I, that's the first I've heard of it. That's tell it. me, please tell me. Anyway, hang on. Uh, doubts have been cast over Reese Walsh's immediate future, and a mid-season switch could be on the cards. Reese Walsh's immediate future under question after interim coach Stacey Jones swung the axe, dropping the rising star to the bench. Having signed with the Broncos for 2023 onwards, the New Zealand club are looking to give other players more starting time. As it stands, Walsh's role is set to be reduced following Round 19 team selection. Um... Oh, and then some fuck from the Daily Telegraph has a suggestion. So they have until August 1 deadline to make mid-season Oh, this is just a speculator, is it? Walsh could be the perfect perfect candidate to make a short-term switch like that of Tavita Pangai Jr. to the Panthers. Oh, okay. Um, If that's the way they're going to do it, I wonder... Pappy's out for the season, so so therefore we let's try and move the pieces around. Oh, yeah, fucking here we go. I've got no mail on it, but if they're not not going to play him... 
Chamalalis. What's his fucking name? Michael Chamalalis. Chamalalis. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking pachampa chomp. Um, yeah, there you go. Me- meanwhile, Craig Bellamy has a headache. Uh, what about linking up with Melbourne? Voss said. So there you go. There's a fucking story, and I've just been clickbaited. Happens to the best of us. Fuck you, Fox. Absolutely victimized by, by the yeah. fucking clickbait. They got you. They did. They fucking got me. <laughs> oh, defenses were down. So exactly. in that, I'm going to assume that there are no other news stories we're going to talk about. We're going to proceed into round 19's Let's go. Games. Thursday night, Parramatta Eels take on the Brisbane Broncos in Parramatta. The uh, Parramatta side, welcome back, Ryan Madison, uh, which results in Nicore being benched and Rodwell dropping out of the 17. Cartwright added to the reserves. The... Uh, and we've already had the 24-hour warning, so he's gone. Just as quick. Easy come, easy go. Unlucky, Brycey. Broncos side. Oates, Capewell, and Carrigan return from state of origin duty. Uh, Cobbo still out with the head knock. Um, Payne Haas and Corey Pace also return from injury. Turpin starts at hooker. Billy Walters is injured. Palacia, Flegler, and Hetherington benched. And Hoyter, Hosking, and Kennedy out of the 17. Should be a good game. It should be entertaining. This this one's kind of like having a uh, borderline girlfriend. You know, you you never know which version of them's going to show up. Is it the one that's going to be, uh, you know, super, super put together and and amazing, but slightly manic, or or the one that wants to run you over with their car? So, which, which Parramatta side do you get turn up? That that's what I think this one hinges on. You know what the Broncos are going to do. They've played at about the same level most of the year. The, bit of a dip last week, but they did have a bunch of Origin guys out who yeah, they mostly welcome back as well. Yep. Um, if if that top tier Parramatta that can do Melbourne and Penrith turn up, the Broncos are fucked. But if the Parramatta comes out that fucking plays like they did against the Tigers, Jesus Christ! Hmm. I'm going to tip. I'm going to tip Brisbane. Um, I just I don't think Para have it. Consistently, and when they need it, there's not a. It's not one of those teams that can flick it on and off as required. Um, they're just, as you say, it's a bit too sporadic. And I think Brisbane just by sheer the 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 consistency, as you said, Jade, in the level of their play, even though their ceiling isn't as high as Parramatta. Um, I think, you know, they'll, they'll keep the errors down and Reynolds will steer them around. I, I think Parramatta might be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. look, I think Par- I mean, Parramatta generally start, you know, start feeling like building, you know, start around this time of the year. Um, look, they, the, Bronco, the Broncos weren't, the Broncos weren't good. I mean, it was a lucky escape for them last week. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, yeah, they had some guys out from origin, but at the same time, yeah, Adam Reynolds has been the catalyst all season and he was there and that combination was in place. So, and yet, you know, they still turned in perform. Yeah, you know, one of probably their, their patchier performances of yeah. recent times. And look, uh, again, th- you're right. There was that the case last year where Parramatta had fallen off and people wrote them off and then all yeah. of a sudden come finals time. Beast. You know? Yeah. They were a, uh, a bee's dick away from beating the Premiers. Yeah, fuck para. Look, look, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to go Parramatta. <laughs> For some, but I mean, Glenny, I understand why you'd uh, why you'd select your team. You're a piece yep. of shit, Nathan. I've always said it, and you've never changed. I don't know why you're attacking me. We're talking about two rugby league teams that, <laughs> yeah, it's not even the West Tigers, mate. You just, you just, you're in a very well, aggressive mood tonight. I don't, I'm uncomfortable. Well, you're you're victimized. All, you're always positive about them, and your kid wears their jerseys. It's safe to assume they're your team. <laughs> there was the old Wii incident of about 2015 uh, it's never, it never happened <laughs> it fucking did uh, <laughs> <laughs> first Friday game the Dragons take on Seagulls um, at Netstrata Jubilee the Dragon side Moses Umbai replaces Moses Suli I don't think I don't think they realise just because they're both of the Moses <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, there's a difference there uh, it's Sullivan, like having a Jesus and a Jesus. <laughs> Sullivan takes up the vacant bench spot. Tarek Sims replaces Aaron Woods. 
Um, the manly side, Jakey Turbo is out with the Coviche. So Toff simply joins the pack in lock. The Paseca added to the interchange. So uh, it's great to see Paseca back in the side at the expense of Jakey, you know, not so much. Um, this one is traditionally a gimme for the Dragons. Played it, played it at, at Jubilee. They always fucking win there. Bogey team at bogey ground. Potentially rain. So there's a huge chance for the Dragons here. Um, I'd love to see that obviously Manly smash them to not only win the game and you know continue the recent uh, vein of good form that they've been displaying and great attack, but also to, you know, as we previously mentioned, kill the Tigers off for the year. That'd be satisfying. Yep. Um, and look, I think that, you know, even without the you know the, the spiritual the spiritual leader of Jakey, the heart of the team, if not the brain of the team, um, I still think there's plenty, plenty there to uh, to smash them up. And the fact that they actually getting are getting another you know big body in there, I mean what they lose in ball playing, I expect maybe Dylan Walker or something might sort of start at, he might he might switch to, to start at lock or something to try and um, yeah fill that void. But with the extra big bodies they've got there. Um, they are going to absolutely feed it to the Dragons and uh, potentially add hook to the list of dead coaches. Well, that, that's the other thing that came out this week. All of a sudden, he he was the quickest fucking turnaround ever. Mm. Yeah. Like, all, all yeah. Of a, there were those stories out there with, oh, he's, his future in, in the club's you know, under the microscope. Well, he I did sign He did sign an extension, though, did he? Or yeah, was it just they did. Was they signed an discussed? extension yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, but then, then since the club's come out and said he has the full support of the club, yeah, that's always yeah, a good so. sign. Yeah, which is often means the opposite of what they say. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's the other thing too. The dragons have been fucking copying it in the media all week as well. So there's a yeah a bogey team copying it in the media all week at the bogey ground that we rarely win. I mean, you know, sometimes there you know things like that can you know upset the apple cart in terms of displayed form. But I would love Manly to get a a good game out of the first half and then you know do what the Roosters did to them and you know throw a casual. 40 on them in the second half mm, if, yeah. if possible just to fix up the four and against a bit more and uh, yeah keep fine tuning that attack yep I'm going to tip Manly um, despite the fact that seeing Nathan happy disgusts me um, <laughs> seeing Dragons fans <laughs> seeing Dragons fans happy disgusts me even more so I'm going to tip Manly it's a real Sophie's choice for you this week <laughs> <isn't> it, <buddy? laughs> yeah. um, I will say that it, again I was I was sexually harassed um, at the front of work yesterday um, with a particular Dragons fan driving past, blowing kisses at me. <laughs> so <laughs> holding up tra- holding up traffic, mind you. One day, one day he's just, one day he's just going to fucking put it into a pole. Can I <laughs> carry what, on, Glenn? What do you think sex is? Look, Jay. Sometimes when a man and a woman love each other, or a man and a man, or a man in his hand. Love each other very, very much. Uh, I don't need. To, I don't have the time to explain this to you. I can't believe I have to. You've but he was fucking, blowing. He was blowing. Child. He was blowing kisses. Yeah, it starts there though. It starts there. Then bam, I'm pregnant with triplets. Were you having heart attacks like on the first day of school? I didn't watch, go to a watch, Catholic watch, school. No. What, what, watching all the watching all the mums drop their kids off. <laughs> <laughs> It's outrageous. What? You need to understand. You need to understand the type of human being we're dealing with. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. The uh, Newcastle Knights taking on the Sydney Roosters uh, on Friday night in Newcastle. The Newcastle Knights side, Heimel Hunt, has been named for the first time this year, replacing Dom Young. Um, Sasangi is out injured. Brody Jones replaces him on the bench. Kurt Mann joins the interchange. Glenn's mate. Um, the <laughs> Roosters side in the NRL. The Roosters. Luke Keary returns and Letters returns as well. Jared Maria Hargraves after a few weeks out. Manu shifts back to the centres. Uh, Takayaho is out with the cheek injury. Um, and so Lodge will start prop alongside Letters. And they're the absolute crankiest cunt of a front, of a front row this week. Uh, Tupanu is out with a knee injury. Nat Butcher starts at lock. Yeah, that sucked. And, and May on the bench. Oh well, you know, like like Tupanu is, you know, he, he is a loss, but is he a net loss? I don't know. I mean, because it feels like every game a kick goes through and he spills it trying to ground it. Um, so, <laughs> oh no, I'm just I, I don't know what it is, but it just like this year, the all the fucking like knees and ankles and 
like dislocations and shit. I just feel so fucking bad for those of us. Like mm. the the disrupted seasons and the COVIDs and the, you know, whatever it is. And now all of a sudden, yeah, you fucking you're gone. Sorry. Yeah. It's yeah. Just yeah, sucks. Anyway, um, Newcastle don't have eighty minutes in them. Like, no. do, like unequivocally, do not have eighty minutes of solid football, uh, and don't have enough in sixty minutes to get over the Roosters. And um, you know what, Billy they Smith. Could... Yeah, I know you mentioned his knee injury, but his that's his third. Yep. Um, potentially, maybe forced to retire at the age of fucking twenty-two. That is a, a fucking horrible run. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, Knights, yeah, the, the Knights. If they put out a good sixty minutes, you know what? The Dragons put about sixty minutes up last week as well, mm. and the last twenty minutes was an absolute fucking nightmare. Uh, see how I'm interested to see how Kiri comes back. Um, I know he's beloved by Roosters fans, but he's surely coming to this is kind of last chance in terms of his body. And, yeah. you know, and injury wise, just because the, the Roosters are a club that that I think absolutely do the right thing when it comes to head injuries. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if he gets if he gets concussed again, his next then... job will be part of a seafood chowder because he's a fucking soft shell crab, apparently, Nathan. Which is one yeah, of the well, greatest calls ever. Which I still or in a sushi or, or, in a, or in a sushi roll. <laughs> they go great in there as well. <laughs> But yeah, look, roosters and uh, and roosters by plenty. I would expect the knights to, if not go with them, at least provide some reasonably staunch resistance for the first forty. But I expect the roosters to run away with it well and truly. I feel like uh, the knights will, f- will fancy themselves going to Gagai and 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 Ponga on an edge. But again, I I just don't think they've got a performance consistently over the course of a match to to hang with the roosters. The, uh, we move to Saturday and the Canberra Raiders take on the New Zealand Warriors in Canberra. The Raiders side um, we welcome the return of Nick Kotrich um, and he replaces Jordan Rappiner who is suspended. Uh, Albert Hopawate remains in the side. He made his uh, Canberra debut off the bench. Oh, actually, he was like the, the foul play 18th man injury reserve, I think, wasn't he, last week? Mm. And um, he's actually starting on the wing this week uh, in, in uh, place of uh, James Schiller who was injured of course, another one that we were talking about. And um, Corey Haru and Ira drops to the bench. Whitehead back in the side. The Warriors side. Okay, so DWZ's back. Reese Walsh is uh, benched in the 14. Um, Channel Harris Tavita moves to fullback. Dejan Arcee comes in at 5 8. Uh, Penne benched. Uh, Fanua Blake back in prop. Kosi and Lucky are out of, uh, Lussica out of the 17. And Volkman as a reserve. I find it interesting that uh, Reese Walsh has been uh, benched in order to give other players more time um, to develop for the Warriors, and he's been replaced with a guy that is retiring been, slash taking a year off at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, and been a mainstay and had all the, all the development time he probably needs. <laughs> yeah. And he's ever going to um, Also, I mean, also Volkman getting dropped for, you know, for, for, for Dejan Arcee. Like I haven't, I, I haven't if, hated Volkman to be honest. I no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, if we're talking about developing players, I mean, I thought he was actually going all right for him. Mm. And uh, yes, look, there's some strange selections there, but you know, it's a Stacey Jones era. Got to trust the man. Um, I don't trust the Warriors to win this game. I think the Raiders no, will uh, handle them comfortably. Dollar twenty eight favorites, um, which is probably about where the Raiders should be. Um, Look, it's where it's where that yeah, exactly. And it's particularly after winning a, a, a you know in an upset over the, over the storm the week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, and and I and I have no doubt that the Raiders will uh, will win this one. I'd like yep. to see the Warriors at least try and maintain some semblance of the 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 toughness that they've displayed at times. In certainly in their return to Mount Smart, and you know for like the first half last week as well. Mm. Um, but let's see if they can do that for 80 minutes. And uh, even if they do, I don't think it's going to be enough against the Raiders. I think the uh, the Raiders' back line, whilst I know Kotrick had, um, he's played, did he play a whole, se- a whole series of origin or just one game? He's a he representative played a se- player. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously Whiten. But then you've got Fogarty, Albert Hopawati, Tomoko, 
and Savage, uh, along with Sebastian Chris, fucking, they're playing some good footy with some unheralded <laughs> players in the back line. Um, Fogarty is a solid seven, but he's he's not a he's not a game changer if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. But um, I just I think I'm loathe to give Ricky Stewart too many raps, but what he's actually turning this side into with some of the plays he's got in there is, is, is actually um, it's a lot more impressive right now than where I thought it was going to be. Yep. The thing the thing about the Raiders is too they they as as well as they seem to go as a unit they've never quite had the halfback mm. in in this in this era yeah. even when they got even when they got to the grand final mm. they haven't quite had like like they haven't had like a cleary daily cronk like a like a, a one that every club you know you look at them and go yeah that's a fucking like top line halfback i mean they they've had guys that are you know good and shown you know moments of brilliance at times but nothing like they haven't got that guy yeah, and I th- and I th- and I look at them at times, and I think that that's literally the only piece they probably need. They could probably, you know, make you know make inroads and do damage with most of the most of the rest of the side that they yeah. throw out there if they had like a top top halfback. Well, like, who, who who did Melbourne win? Has Melbourne won post Cronk? They've won one post. Yeah, yeah, they won one. Yeah, they, yeah, one. Who was their half in that? That would have been Jerome Hughes. Yeah, Hughes was it? Yeah. And he's a stand- oh, he's, yeah, and, that's right. They beat Penrith, didn't they? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and and he's and he's uh, and he's brought himself he's and, and he's put himself up to that like you know he's, he's one that, of those top guys. Yeah, now. but he he is. But I th- I think the thing with him is he's solid. Yeah, like he's a representative level player, no question yeah. about it. But you know, I'm I'm not sure you need to be a Cronk or a Clear. No, no, no. But also, the Storm have guys around him that are far exceed. Yeah, true. The the you know, the rest of the list, like I'm saying, like that Canberra Canberra list, maybe you know, get Hop White out there, he's useless. But, um, you know, at full, you know, when they've got their first choice wings and stuff in there, I, you know, they could they could be doing so much better, just with the one change being you know in the seven, yeah. And like, cause Fogarty Fogarty's not the guy. No, I mean he's a, he's he was just replacing like with like really. I mean just the I guess the bringing out to the kind of George Williams era level. Yeah, you know, sort of standard, I suppose. Um, but yeah, look, I expect Canberra to win this one, fucking easily. To be yep. honest, I, yeah, they the, should. The, the Warriors are abs- an absolute disappointment to their nation, and uh, and and while we respect the sac- <laughs> while we respect the sacrifices that they made during COVID, which you know were fucking terrible, you know, <laughs> personal lives and families being being ripped apart. We're talking straight football here. Absolute embarrassment. Fair enough. Third nation. The Panthers take on the Sharks Saturday afternoon uh, at Blue Bet Stadium in Penrith. Uh, the Panthers side welcome back their Origin players, which means uh, Lindsay Smith, Sonny Luke, Kurt Falls, and Rob Jennings drop out completely. Eisenhuth and Kenny remain on the bench. The Sharks side season ending peck injury to Sione Katoa. Um, that is offset by the return of Talakai at centre. Tracy moves to the wing. Nakora is back from suspension, so Wilton's benched. And uh, that's the Sharks. You can Good. never convince me that Talakai returning to the centres is a net, net positive ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, look, it, it's a danger game for Penrith. As in, you know, you, you were talking before, Nate. The Sharks, Sharks are a definite fucking bogey team for us. What's it? Yeah, I mean, not not paying as much uh, close attention, obviously, to your guys as I pay to mine. What is the what, what's the recent history there? It well, it, it started with you know Luke Lewis left, um, Wade Graham's gone there, Matt Moylan's gone there, trades being won, trades it, being lost. No, not, not even the so Jimmy much. Maloney that. back and forth. It was 100% more, I think, just about those guys because a couple of them didn't leave under the best circumstances. Um, he's wanting just to come back and and play out of their fucking skin. Like, just li- literally yeah. have the greatest game of their season against us. And that was before we were the number one team where everybody came out every week and tried to have the best game of their season against you all the time. So... Um, I think the Sharks really struggle for relevancy. Like they, they won that comp 
Um, and now, you know, they, they don't have anything that really makes them a, a, a notable franchise except for, you know, um, Scott Morrison goes for them. Well, you know, did. Um, I mean, they've lost him now too. No, they haven't. He's still there. It's a, fu- it's a further step down to the, he's, to he's the, the irrelevance. He's the number one ticket holder. He's <laughs> fucking up, up forever, old ScoMo is. Um, you know, like, okay, yep. Yeah, we, we love ScoMo in the Shire. Um, we're a bit racist. He has the key to the Shire, which which means you can shit in any McDonald's that you feel like. That's it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and and I think that they would really be looking at Penrith, you know, to to look at look at a, a proper organisation, um, you know, that have had uh, sponsors on their jerseys for the last yes. couple of seasons. This, um, this as, we as an inspiration. Talking, we started out talking about. <laughs> the game like you know seriously and then we, and then you can feel the segue how we, it segue to just i'm just going to talk mad shit on now you're bingy <laughs> i'm just um, fully skylarking all the time um uh, yeah but the, the the performance they put on last week they are play up tempo they're not um, fading in terms of fitness at the end of games their defense is fucking incredible and they're making hard to defend plays in attack you know like Nate you you were talking about last week the amount of times that if there's a a break down the side they've got big skillful well you know most of the most of the parts skillful outside backs Mm. you know three three of the three of the four centers and wings, um, make a break down the side, who can put a fucking kick in, yeah. angle that down towards the posts, and the, their edge forwards will back up just as well, just like an outside back will anyway. So it's a massive danger game for Penrith. And I really hope that coming back from their origin break, the guys are, are recharged and ready to go. So um, they, they really should win the game. But this has all the earmarks to be probably the biggest grind they've been in because Cronulla are playing this up-tempo style of football but really do still seem to somehow turn it into an arm wrestle when, when those games really shouldn't be. It should should almost be a, a who drops first race but they still want to turn it into a fucking mud fight. So um, Panthers 13 plus and... Cronulla to to go back to their shark fucking holes doing that thing where they put their hand on their head because they think that sharks have fins on their fucking head and that's now their fucking I don't know club thing that they do because they're all fucking mentally challenged the ebbs and flows of this analysis (laughs) fucking (laughs) sight to behold (laughs) I mean, uh, that's all a lot of shit. Penrith can't lose. Thank you. I mean, at least and they've goodbye. got at least at least they've got a thing that they do for the club. I mean, it's kind of nice. I mean, the Panthers haven't had anything since they're fucking strapping the strapping the plastic on the fucking cheerleaders, strapping the real real life the real genuine vinyl on the cheerleaders, <laughs> and watching them bounce around. Um, yeah, look, I just, you, I just think that the up tempo style. Have of you play not is, seen the fucking the thing we do? We we do the fucking the Panther claw. Do you not know? Do you know the biggest claw on a Panthers paw? The fucking middle one. You look at any photo from a Panthers game, and everyone in the crowd's doing this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not surprising. I, I look I, like I think Panthers win this easily. I, th- I think that uh, while the Sharks are showing something intact, I think that they some of those big bodies in the middle they don't have the kind of fitness to go with the you know the up tempo game, like eighty minutes of up tempo straight at them. And I'm talking about guys like Toby Rudolph and. And like Andrew Fafita and you know guys like that, I just I I think they're just gonna, they're going to get caught out and and as the game takes its toll and go you know and 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 wears on and I think by the end of it, if the Panthers haven't haven't got you know got away with it early in the second half, I think they'll pull away towards the end. Anything to say, Glennie? Penrith can't lose. Can't lose. Oof. Cannot lose. Okay. All right. The Rabbitohs take on the Storm. Um. At Accor Stadium, uh, the Rabbit side, 
Cook and Murray return. Havili and Mawali drops to the bench. Uh, Saluka Fafita drops to the reserves. Jed Cartwright named to start centre. Uh, Tane Milne is out. The Storm side. Meany moves to fullback. And uh, I imagine that's where he'll be for the rest of the season, unless some fanciful Fox News fucking pundit Reese Walsh thing comes true. Um, <laughs> Wishart comes in on the wing. Anderson added to the bench. I think this is a game where um, Melvin fall a little bit deeper into the slump that they've been in, um, given the absence of of Pappy. And the media is going to be all over Latrell. I think he'll have a big game. And I think um, Seas are starting to build a little bit of momentum and, and find their best form. And they catch Melbourne in a bit of a dip. I think I think Seas will win 1-12. to yeah, I think it's been, what's been made very clear over the last couple of weeks is that Melbourne Storm are very easy to beat. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you're hearing it more and more <laughs> for three weeks in a row now. <laughs> Albeit it's a game not involving your team, but it's like you went, oh, Jay, you just carried on with a whole heap of fucking bullshit. Hold my beer. <laughs> Look, the stats bear it out. <laughs> Um, yeah, look, even even with Pappy, I mean, he, I was, he he was re-injured before he'd had the chance to fully reintegrate into the side, of course. But uh, man, they're just they're just worrying signs with the Storm, just in the the real the basic things that they've always done well. Just the, you know, just scrambling and just defensive intensity in general. They just they're, and they're not being refereed out of it or anything either. It's just they just don't seem to be there with that um, can still score points and the Rabbitohs do love, you know, they a, a bit of a shootout as well. But uh, yeah, look, I think the Rabbitohs just, they feel like they're building and the Storm feel like they're fading. And uh, I'm not saying you're wrong, but the Rabbitohs leaked a lot of points. Yeah. They, they, they're against having Canterbury. Yeah. They're having shootouts. Yeah. Yeah. And and look, Melbourne are crueled with injury at the moment, and don't have the firepower out wide. That they yeah, I don't did. think they can win even if it's a shootout. But is that like I'm just like Mun- I've seen Munster go superhuman so many fucking times, like yeah. so many fucking times, especially against lazy goal line defenders. And let's be frank, some of the tries that the dogs scored were you know, pretty ordinary. Yeah. Um, yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne at the Korean Housewife. Yeah, but it's not. It's at Sydney Olympic Park. Oh, fuck it. As I was saying, it's the first South. time all season they've been South. Yeah. You've, yeah. Fucking, South. you've sold him. You've sold him. He assumed that Melbourne played every game at home. Yes, I did. Him. You are in his head. Fuck me. That's the stage is how it goes. Some First you say it. <laughs> then you make sure they're hearing it more and more. Then they believe it. <laughs> and then they think it. <laughs> that, uh, that is the four stages right there. <laughs> Look, I think, yeah, Rabbitohs. Just, just, and, and you know what? It could very well be a shootout because you're right. The Rabbitohs can concede points, but they can fucking score some at the moment, especially with the Trell Mitchell returning in Insta God mode. Yeah. And geez, when was the last time the storm? When would the last time have been that they lost four in a row? I mean, I'm talking about the three in a row as being like a many years mm. sort of thing, like 2017 or something, didn't they say? 15, I think. So. Yeah, 15. It. Fuck, so yeah, I'd love to know what four is then. Look, the, yeah, they they put a they put a picture of Bellamy up, like this is what he looked like the last time they lost three in a row. It was like and a let f- me guess, let me guess, without seeing the photo, he looked like a grumpy cunt. No, oh, no, he, he actually looked like a. <laughs> A fucking fresh face kid, like just you know, <laughs> going in for work experience. <laughs> uh, before the before before he was corrupted by the dark side, just after constant exposure to the dark side. That's it. Um, the doggies take on the Titans in Parramatta. The doggy side uh, unchanged lineup. Uh, Ado Car suffering an ankle injury, but still listed. Um, Shop is listed in the reserves uh, after making his return from uh, COVID or being out from COVID last round. Uh, the Titans side, Jaden Campbell returns, but he's named on the bench. 
Uh, Big Tino's back in the starting side with Locke with Clark benched. So, look, the Titans, I'm not going to say they were impressive, but they look much much improved for, you know, all well, the way they hung in that game for mm. the full 80 minutes, you know, is, is, some, is something. Um, the Dogs look better than they were. Much I, better than they were. The, the the dogs from last week beat the Titans from last week. Especially when the Titans' big guns yeah. decide just to fucking pack up and not be involved in the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, and the, the, and the one knock that we had on the dogs uh, was that they, you know, they had such trouble scoring points despite having, you know, an, an attacking genius as their head coach. Remove the attacking genius... And they've taken the fucking governor off the engine, and actually they they can, can score bulk points now. And uh, the Titans, they love to they love to not defend. Love it. They can't get enough of not defending. <laughs> Look, I, I think the doggies will win this game. Well, I agree. I, I think dogs yeah. are thirteen plus certainties for this game. If it's a hat trick, if, if 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 the ankle injury is completely eradicated from Adokar, okay, he's getting a hat trick as well. Oh. I'm telling you right now, get your multis in. Really? Wow. And look, yeah, you know, and look, I, really, I mean, all, all I have to see out of this game is an injury-free return from Jaden Campbell, because I think that that's that's something that the Titans desperately need him to be full back, and so they can move Brimson into the halves to try and get something going there, because yes, you know, Sexton can't do it alone. No. Nah. Finally. The North Queensland Cowboys take on the West Tigers up at the Abattoir in Townsville. The Cowboys side, they welcome back Holmes, Dearden, Nanai and Talangi. The front row, though, for starting. Luciano De Lua, he moves to prop. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I oh, don't know. Jermaine Tanile brown uh, he goes to the bench. Um, who else? The Hammer, he's in 14. Limuelu and Chester out of the 17. Ben Hampton omitted completely. Yep. The West Tigers side. Naden returns from suspension, so he replaces Junior Tupo on the wing. Mm-hmm. Nofaluma is named as a reserve alongside uh, James a, Roberts. Nofaluma's... Why? What's happening there? They, he was sick in round... Sick, they say, oh, in round 18. Okay. I don't know. A non-COVID illness, I believe, him and James Roberts. Uh, Tamau starts at prop. Musgrove benched. Uh, Peachy and Safarth join the interchange. Madam Moore... Uh, goes to the reserves and Simkin is omitted. Yeah. They just, they doesn't matter who's the coach, they just cannot fucking figure out this hooker situation, can they? No, I think... Well, I mean, they've, they've figured out that Lids is not, not the guy. He's not in the running anymore, but mm. I mean, this this finals playoff between Simkin and, and, uh, <laughs> and New Brown, <laughs> it's going to go for the rest of the season. I think so. Um... I think New Brown's doing okay. He's he's sharp around the ruck. Um, before look, you, both, before both you start, teams, I want, I want, uh, hey, Glee, I want to hit you something first before you start. Okay. Before I just I saw start, something. I'm I just, give some I just saw some, something. Just came, something just came up in front of me on on uh, on Twitter, right before we started talking about this game, and I sort of so I opened it up. Now Tim Sheens on Thursday is going to be having lunch with Bulldogs general manager Phil Gould, Oof. and. Uh, Brent Reed believes that potential player swaps will be on the topics of conversation. And he says that the one Tigers name that has been linked with the Bulldogs is one Jackson Hastings. If the Bulldogs said, we love Jackson Hastings, I reckon the Tigers would say, he's all yours. Well, I'll say you. I saw this from a West Tigers, a West Tigers supporter. They tweeted it out with the caption, I will burn that new centre of excellence to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I will uh, happily travel to Concord and piss on the smouldering ashes <laughs> of that centre of fucking trash. If that, uh, you, you've, you, why, why you got to fucking, why are you got to do this, Nathan? Why do you have to bring that up? I just thought it was a, it was topical. That's all. So, what do you think of that, Glenny? What would you want? What would you want back? I, I don't want Jackson Hastings to go anywhere. No, no. But what would you want back? He's already going. What? Like, what do well, you want back? 
Josh Josh Jackson? No. <laughs> Corey a, Waddell? He's a 13, isn't he? Josh Jackson can play lock. <sighs> Fucking Josh Addo Carr. Um, Matt Burton. Um, Why do you want to ruin Matt Burton? Huh? You've, already, you've already ruined Dane Laurie. Why do you think they would James even be Tamau. on the table? At best, Sorry? you could get. At best, you could probably get yourself a a Fatala Mariner or something. But even then, probably not. He's even then he's probably off off, off limits to yeah. you. I'm fucking stunned by that. That they would even. And I guess it's probably only just a fucking journalist speculation. How the fuck does he know that Gould and Sheen's are going to lunch? It's his job to know, Glenny. Well, I'd like yeah. to fucking. I want to see photos. <laughs> I want to see photos of Gould with a salad in front of him, Sheensy with a fucking steak. Um, I want to see notepads with players' names on them. And what makes you think that they don't use iPhones? Because they're both old cunts. Give me a break. They're both still writing shit down. You know that. These um, and flip phones. Still. <laughs> <laughs> um, but serious, real talk, they get Hastings. Who do you want back? So let's play. It. I'm Gus. You're Sheens. Fuck you, Gus. You're a cunt. I hate you. Hi, I'm a real coach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm no, I'm no longer hungry. Okay, so I'm I'm getting Jackson Hastings. Sheens. You're not one for role play, are you, Glenn? No, <laughs> no don't enjoy it. So, okay, I'm get I'm getting Jacko. What, what do you want back? Now, I've got to tell you, there's a couple of people that are off the table. Birdo's off the table. Addo Carr's off the table. And anyone joining the club next year is off the table. You know, so you can't get like Kick Out or Reed Marnie or right someone on. like that. Tavita Pangai Jr. Um, tell him no. he's dreaming. Yeah, no. Well then, no. we ha- we don't have a deal. I'm sorry, Gus. It's your shit for lunch. But we're taking we're taking your thirteen. I'm going to have the prawn toppers on my steak. Your pain. <laughs> well, you having like is this power lunch taking place at Hog's Breath or something? <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined what Sheensy and fucking Good eat. I don't know that they're fucking fine dining. Um, a couple of old cunts are probably getting seniors discounts. No. it's... Seriously, who do you, who do you, let's say you leave. Oh, you've you, asked me the question three times and given me three know, answers. You you've told me I can't have answer those answers. I've wants, given you he, three answers and you've told me none of those are, are fucking he, valid. He, he wants I don't you to know say what Josh you want Jackson. me to say. You want a Jackson trade. You can have either... You, you, they get, they get uh, Jackson Hastings and you can either get Josh Jackson or, or Jackson Turpine back. <laughs> <laughs> Take your yeah. pick. You know what? If I'm the dogs, if I'm the dogs, I almost let TPJ go. Get him to throw some cash on top of there because he hasn't set the world on fire there. He's been disappointing at the club. Yes, I agree. Um, Jackson Hastings, in contrast, has not been disappointing. Is that because of all the games he's won? Listen. It's all the touches rugby, he's got his game. A rugby and league player just can't be judged. That's an ignorant analysis from a man that's fucking a host of the rugby league podcast fucking. <laughs> I'm so fucking stunned that even that there's even speculation that that Hastings would be offered up. That that's I fucking I don't I don't. Glenny, it's the fucking scorpion. <laughs> You're the fucking dying frog. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh god. Maybe we're maybe we're back to the fucking Brooks for um Flanagan thing, maybe. That was- Jackson Hastings and Luke Brooks. For Flano. Are you a fuckwit? No. Luke Brooks straight up for Kyle Flanagan. No. How, what about this deal? You take Luke Brooks, I'll pay for lunch, and I'll get no one else back. 
<laughs> only oh, I, I only if you let me put a prawn topper on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I don't think that there's any anyone that that, uh, that Jackson Hastings could go across for. I don't think there's anyone that the Bulldogs have, that would release that would excite a half intelligent recruiting guy. Yeah, I don't think they're releasing anybody that there's there there's you know I'm not going to say that there's a new era upon them, but they've certainly spent a lot of money in recruitment, and they've got these guys coming in next, and like the guys that make way next year. Uh, like your your Corey Waddell's because he's you oh know, you know because Kickout's gonna have his jersey. Do you know who it is? Who? It's Benji's fucking half brother. They get Reed Marnie next year. Isn't he going to? Um, is he going to go to the Dolphins? Yeah, he's going yeah. to the Dolphins. He's he'll, Dolphins. He'll, he'll backflip to go to go under his fucking brother. Oh, that was the other story that we didn't talk about. Anyway. <laughs> You got to talk about this guy. That was the other story about about Kieran Four. Apparently, Manly found found a little bit a bit of extra cheddar, and then the backflip could be on. It's on. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. So he's, good. Got, he's got that milf money. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it being the, the the being family allowance for being with, being with all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Glennie, sorry, mate. Let's Fucking now. now poor, we, we, poor Kieran Foran. He's like, <laughs> he goes home with his professional sportsman's paycheck, and his dad's like, "I'm the fucking CEO of Walmart, man." And his wife's like, "I got nine kids. I don't pay taxes. Fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, he's the third poorest man in his family. Anyway. Right, Glenny, the game. What do you got? Well, it's, I've said it many times, Nathan. It's always rung true that the. The West Tigers always beat the Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys, where we've lived in the Cowboys' heads for almost the entire duration of uh, of the Cowboys' existence, and uh, I don't see this game panning out any differently. I think West Tigers uh, will turn one on, and Brooksy, and hopefully stay the fuck away from the rest of the players and let Dewey and Jacko do their thing shortly before Dewey leaves. Uh, shortly before Jacko leaves to uh, join the Bulldogs, apparently. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, look, the, cow- the Cowboys are they're 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 a beatable side, as as uh, the Sharks showed, you know, albeit versus the depleted version uh, last week. Yeah, but man, the way the the way through the Cowboys, yeah, does not correlate in any way to anything that the West Tigers can throw their their direction. <laughs> not, <laughs> like 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 at all. Yeah, a lot right. of history. They've got a lot of history to draw from. There'll be a lot of highlight reels watched um, of the um, you know wins for the ages against the Cowboys over the years. So many of them, countless victories. Um, no matter how bad the Tigers might be going, we always beat the Cowboys. No matter where we play. Um, Proposed scoreline: uh, thirty-six to twelve. <laughs> In favour of the Cowboys, right? Get fucked. I've just said... Noffa's only, only on the bench. Yeah, so he'll only get two tries. Yeah, so we won't leak the fucking 36. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Cow- yeah, Cowboys. look, cow- Cowboys, and, like, I just... I can't see a way that the Cowboys win this game by less than 30 points, honestly. No. Nah. I would consider that a defeat if they lost... If they won by less than 30. <laughs> I just... I just cannot see it. There are so many just absolute mismatches, and the only thing that gives me pause about the Cowboys is that Cohen Hess and Luciano Le Lewis starting front row. Yep, puts the fear of nothing into every like. There's <laughs> got to be. I mean, that's the kind of front row that you'd expect the West Tigers genius era to throw up. Yeah. No. Nah. But uh, yeah, look, the Cowboys. I can't see. I can't see like the Cowboys. Not <laughs> nah. Tigers can't lose. All right. All right. All right, Glenny. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, metaphorically patting you on the head right now, saying, "All right, mate. <laughs> right, you're, right, you're right, you're right, Glenn. They can't, <laughs> they can't lose. <laughs> they're always, they're always in a fucking game. Always. <laughs> he's, 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 imagine, he's, he's imagine the room with you right now. <laughs> this mad you speak in of. spirit. <laughs> These tigers that are always in fucking games. Are they even in the room with you right now, mate? <laughs> no, that, someone would get a fucking stern talking to if they were." Yeah, right. Um, 
that's it folks that is it for uh episode 480 and uh, as always if you'd like to support the show consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash tour nation uh, otherwise hit us up this week in league.com um He's up on our Facebook group, hashtag Twill Nation on Facebook. Uh, all our socials, go to thisweekinleague.com forward slash links and you'll find links to all of our socials uh, as mentioned. And uh, thanks for listening. Fellas, do you have anything else you'd like to discuss before we adjourn for the week? No. I want someone fucking with eyes on Sheens and Gould. Yeah. That's what I want. You want to sta- stake out? You want to get a wire up on them? I just want to fucking just line it up so one bullet can take out both of them. <laughs> Jeez, the mere <laughs> conversation <laughs> that Jackson Hastings would be fucking offered up from the club. Fuck me. Oh, here we go. When he's putting a thousand bucks on, you know, to give some coaches a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you, what is it with you bald fucking podcasters? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Right, um, are we going to be doing a game companion for this uh, Cowboys game? It's a late game on Sunday. Yeah, why not? Maybe. Yeah. I'll jump I'll jump on with you, Glenny. All right, can't, so yeah, there you, go. there you go, patrons. <laughs> Second half of the Cowboys and uh, West Tigers game. You'll be able to hear in uh, high-definition audio Glenny gloating about the West Tigers always beating the, uh, the Cowboys, so look forward to that. Oh, I'm most certainly looking forward to it. Fuck yeah. Is there anything else, anything else, fellas, before we uh, pull a pin on this? No. No, we're good. All right. On that note, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Later. See ya.